Okay. Hi, YouTubers. It is me, Lynn from Layla Lynn, and it's me, Tammy B. And we're here with a video collaboration, and we are reviewing season three of BET's Being Mary Jane. Um, so we're we're finally here. We've been planning this for a while, but we're finally here, and we are ready to share our thoughts on this season and specifically the season finale, episode 10 of Being Mary Jane. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the um, episode started off with um, Mary Jane and the white guy who I don't think, like we don't know his name, but I don't think in the entire season, I don't think they actually said his name. Um, they just refer to him as GG, gorgeous guy. Gorgeous guy, um, right. I was so, like, oh my gosh, that's so yeah. funny. I know, and then I'm like, okay, is he really gorgeous? But anyway, um, it started off with her in the bed with him, right? <laughs> because she doesn't actually go outside of the house on dates with him. So it right, started off right. with him. So he brought up the fact that even though he liked her house, he likes to go outside. And then she was Yeah, like he's not a bad <laughs> Right. How she really don't have time. And he was like, uh, well, give me a few dates and I'll pick one. I was like, oh, he's trying to make it happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he, he seems like a nice guy, you know. And I feel like she's kind of like not giving him a chance because he's white, you know what I mean? I guess yeah. for whatever reason, she is kind of hung up on that. And then when they do go out. And they go to the karaoke bar and they're singing karaoke. She's very self-conscious. And it's another black couple there. And she feels like the black couple is looking at her and shaking their head at her because she's with a white guy. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That karaoke scene was so funny. I was rolling. <laughs> when she was all standing up there, he was all into the song. And she just standing there like uh -huh. holding the mic like, uh, I feel like the total yeah. girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I felt I felt like she was kind of like insecure, like to be a newscaster and to be, you know, in front of the people so much in her life for her to be so insecure in her personal life and thinking that people are looking at her and talking about her to me uh, was kind of strange to see her like be that insecure. Yeah, it was definitely kind of weird seeing her freeze up because she usually always know what to say. Yeah, but I mean, I can kind of understand it though, because if you're not used to, it's something that you probably thought you would never do, you know, date outside your race, and you know, for you to be doing it and then do it in public, I could, I could see me feeling like, uh, I wonder is everybody looking at me. Really? <laughs> I can kind of understand it, but yeah, yeah, it was, uh -huh. it was kind of weird seeing her freeze up since she always just handles situations. Yeah, where I'm from, I'm from um, like Virginia is like a military area. Oh, little doggy! Right. <laughs> Hi, Fancy wants to be on the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, coincidentally, she waited until it started. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, but where I'm from is kind of like a military area, and it's a lot of interracial relationships in the military. So for me, seeing that, I don't know where I'm from. Interracial relationships are very common. So seeing her. Um, act this way, it seems unusual to me. It seems weird. And then the fact that she um, basically breaks up with him, she's like, I want black love. I don't know. I felt like she kind of played him. It's like, if you wanted yeah. black love... The, that scene when they was at the table, yeah, she went a little extra. To me, the karaoke part was kind of funny. But yeah, when they were at the table having that, that final conversation, I was like, whoa, that's a little <laughs> extra. Yeah, that's a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I guess she had an epiphany and decided she wanted to be with a black man. But look, what do you think about her not dating Cuddy Buddy? You remember Cuddy Buddy? You know what? I kind of thought she should date him. I, I mean, him. I do understand what um, her friend Mark was saying, like, hey, you know, you got a lot going on. You kind of do need to focus on you. And she does have a lot going on. So I could see his side. But I do think if she picks somebody out of all the guys we've seen her with, then to me, yeah. I think Cuddy Buddy is the best candidate. <laughs> yeah. I felt like he had her back. When she was going through her hardest times, he was the one that was there for her. 
And I felt like Mark, I felt like he gave her bad advice. When he told her, you know, just focus on you and stuff like that. I felt like he was giving her bad advice. It did seem like it was coming at the wrong time. Yeah. Mark Cuddy Buddy, I feel like that's exactly what she needed to hear. <laughs> but yeah. now since we met him and he's nice, I'm like, okay, well, everybody except for him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so, so go okay, ahead. So you want to move on to the next scene where um, the boss Greg came into Mary Jane's office and told her what he wanted talk back to be about now, yes. or I guess the first episode. Yes, he was like, you have to. Um, first, first he tried to act like he was asking her, you know, to do, um, uh, you know episode on interracial dating and she didn't want to do it she was like that's my personal life because apparently the pictures went viral it's some pictures of her you know doing karaoke with the white dude that went viral and so he wow. wanted her to take advantage of that and do an episode on interracial dating and she didn't really want to do it because she was like that's my personal life but he was like he's um how did he phrase it he said he's pulling his car. He's pulling his trunk car, right? Or something like that. Like one of my cars. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm pulling out my car. Uh huh. So then you she was like, she had to like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, not like him, but when, you know, she did kind of flash on him a few times. So yeah, she, she finally did, did kind of get into the uh, job. I was like, oh, okay. But one episode later, he back at it. <laughs> yep. That ass bread. Okay. Back at it. <laughs> oh so, my goodness so so she goes and tell her group mm -hmm. hey we, we're coming back but we have to come back on this topic mm -hmm. I forgot her two little uh, workers name or interns name yeah I don't know their names but I like the black girl how she was like you know is it because you're in, in an interracial relationship right. I like you know speaks her mind yeah like that about her and she didn't see nothing wrong with it she thought she was like really just asking the question like hey what's going on here why are we yeah. doing <laughs> and she was right that's exactly right it's because of her interracial relationship yeah but to me this whole thing i guess in my mind i guess to america maybe it's like um fascinating like interracial relationships but to me that whole storyline of the interracial relationship is kind of like trite and like to me it's not it, I don't know. It's something about it to me that's kind of like played out. Like if this was like 1992, maybe. But <laughs> yeah, I don't I know. I know what you mean. I think you know. We like Dane. Are we still talking about? It? Is it still that big of a deal? But that's I don't know. The good thing about being Mary Jane, I don't know if it's just the writing or maybe because it's so modern. They do seem to spin topics that we've talked about so much in a way where it's still so good. <laughs> like, why is her dating this white guy so good and we didn't see it time and time again, you know? But I think maybe just because it's a more modern version of the same story. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. pretty good. What did you think about when, when the white guy was over her house, David's mom came to her house? And I didn't know... I didn't know if she was trying to get her to come back to David. I didn't really get what his mom was trying to do. Right. First of all, I don't think I would have let her in. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, what could this lady possibly want? And I have company? No, she needs to leave a note. <laughs> Look, I am but, not home. I know you see these cars in the driveway, but I am not home. <laughs> Right, and then she come in there talking smart, like, "Oh, for real, I barely let you in." Like, mm -hmm. but yeah, but you're right. She didn't really say like, "What are you there for?" Or do you want me to call him or something? Or if you feel this I way, like, tell him want. and have him call me. Like, it was kind of unclear. Like, what did yeah, she what do you want Mary Jane to go back and be like, "Hey, I talked to your mom," or maybe yeah. she wanted her to just make it seem like, "Hey, I'm just calling you just because." Can we get it back together? Like, yeah, yeah. what does mom want? But yeah. I do kind of understand the mother. Like, sometimes when your kids blow it, you do want to kind of step in and <laughs> help them, even when they are at fault, you know? So yeah. I, I get when she was coming from, but like Mary Jane told her, like, if a guy did that to you, would you go back? No. Right. No, so. It's too much. 
it's it's like too much, especially when you can, you know, meet somebody new and kind of like start fresh. Right. And what she's been through, I feel like she needs a fresh start, you know? Yeah. And then if her, if her and David were to get back together, the issue with Lisa would also would always be kind of like um an issue. Yeah, you know, it was a little dark cloud. Yeah. Over the whole yeah. relationship. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't think they should be together because of that. Right. Okay, so what? Cece? <laughs> Uh, to the office in her high tops. <laughs> let me just say, I love Loretta Devine. Like seeing her as Cece is so weird to me because I just love her. She's always so sweet and she has that soft voice, you know. <laughs> so seeing her play this character, it's, it's interesting. I'm enjoying it, but it's it's definitely interesting. Yeah, I totally agree. I I love her. When I saw her do this role, I was like, what? Well, yeah. it made me like her even more. Like I was like, wow, like I sh that character is really believable. And that's yeah. definitely not a character I ever pictured her as. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that this was gonna be her character when I heard that she was gonna be on the show. So even right. for a few seconds, I was like, is that her? Right. <laughs> but right. she did it real good. But yeah, I don't I don't like the swindle side of her at all. Yeah. But. And she she's such a stalker. I feel like Mary Jane, she's kind of <laughs> making the best out of it. But to me, you show up at my house like all times a day trying to give me advice. Like I would have been called the cops on her. I, like, know. I, would, I wouldn't have uh, paid her off or anything. I would have been called the cops on her. Yeah, I was so surprised from the beginning that Mary Jane even agreed to pay her off. There is no yeah. way I would agree to that. Yeah, but I guess I guess it's different when you're a celebrity or whatever and you don't want things to come out. I guess you have a different train of thought. Right, so. but even like the lady said, and what I thought, um, that was my question a long time ago, ago too, because she had alcohol in her system, but I thought it wasn't above the legal limit. It wasn't. So, I don't think that's a secret that's worth twenty five thousand dollars. I know, I know, girl, no, no, and yeah. I guess in the end, because it's gonna come out, so I guess in the end, Mary Jane figured out, you know what, it's not worth twenty five thousand dollars. And it seemed like Cece, you know, is going to be after her probably for the rest of her life trying to get money from her. And it's just not worth it, you know? Right. So do you want to talk about um, how that ended, that situation with Cece? Right. So Mary J played it so cool because I did not catch. Did you see this coming? Like, I didn't I see did. it from last week when she was at the I bookstore. Did. When they met in the hallway and was walking up the stairs, because Mary Jane was even joking with her, was like, you know how white folks like, so act nice, or whatever she said to her, you know, so she was playing it so cool, so I so did not see that coming at all. Mm -hmm. The um, only thing, I thought, I mean, I didn't see it coming, but at the same time, I thought them writing a book about their situation was weird, because Mary Jane wanted to keep the situation private, that's the whole reason she paid her off. So for her right. to write a book about it, I was like, that is strange. That's the only thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I guess they would have... I don't know, maybe I just thought they was going to leave the... I don't know, but yeah. It, I guess it was weird, but... <laughs> and you know what? All the way up until they literally was like, you're under arrest, I still didn't get it. When yeah. she like took over the meeting, was telling her side of the story. I was like, dang, she be bumping Mary Jane out the way. She trying to just take lead on the book. Like I'm still not catching it. Me either. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, dang, she won't even let Mary Jane talk. Right. Uh, she done like, told everything. Crazy. She told everything. But um, Mary Jane played it cool because I don't know why I feel like I would have been nervous or I would have did something to get in. But I guess she know how slick Cece is. So she had to come with her A-game and she was going to try to trick her into something. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. And then Cece talking about um, when she get out, the lady that she was that was interviewing her, like basically right. she start stalking her. Like right, she's like, I'm gonna call you when I get out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? Is she thinks she's cute or mm -hmm. to do her book? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell why she was saying that. I was like, what? 
<laughs> but um oh then the part when um she was like oh tilt my hat and then he took her hat then she was like put my hat back <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was rolling. I was like, that girl's crazy. Yeah, she is a mess. But that's what she gets. You know what I mean? For what she tried to do, that's that's what she deserved. So she's getting her just due, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, it's about time. I, I, you know, I yeah. only gave her the $25,000 from Jump. Consider the fact mm -hmm. that Mary Jane did. And if that was over, then okay, I would have just had to swallow it. But now to come back? And say, give me some more money for my idea. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah you pushing it, you got it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Mary Jane decided to um, have her arrested when she came back and asked for more money. Mm -hmm. I think that's like kind of was like the turning point in Mary Jane's mind. Like, I'm never going to get rid of this woman. She's always going to be coming to me for money. Right. So, so CC, um, y'all. <laughs> yes, yeah, CC went bye bye. <laughs> So next yes. we got Nisi playing hide go seek in Grandpa's house. <laughs> yeah, and then Nisi so is my favorite character on this show. I like Nisi better than Mary Jane. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, she's I my favorite. She's like Nisi too. Yeah, I feel like she is very kind of like honest. Like she's more open about how she feels about everything. Like she doesn't she doesn't really hide her feelings or try to pretend to be anything that she's not. Yeah, that's true. But um, I do, I feel her pain because it's like you see her dad trying to be a better person for his youngest daughter. And she's like, well, what about me? You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, yeah. I can feel her pain. In it. That's tough. You know, and that's the crazy thing about blended families. Like, you know what? Sometimes you maybe have a kid when you're young and you don't have your stuff together, but then finally you get it together. And then you have another baby. You doing all this extra stuff. The first kid feel like, what? Well, what happened? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, what are you supposed to do? Like, stay a bum forever? Like, no. One day you have to get it together. So, unfortunately, there was that beginning when maybe I didn't have my stuff together. But hey, I can't stay that way forever. So, I'm getting yeah. better. But maybe yeah. he should, you know. Now that he's getting better, he kind of probably needs to include Nisi or do something for Nisi, yeah. you know, as well, along with what he's doing with Deja, the younger daughter, just so they can both feel like they're reaping the benefits of, you know, him getting his stuff together. And I think he feels having her, because she's an adult, and with her being an adult and having her own children, I think he feels like he's done raising her, but he's still trying to raise um, the youngest daughter, Deja. Mm -hmm. But He's mine. It's like she's she's not done. Like she still needs her dad. You know what I mean? So yeah. He does and, but you know, and another thing, and in, in his defense, he probably also feel like, well, hey, yeah, I blew it in my life, but you stand with my parents, so technically, indirectly, I'm taking care of you. <laughs> I guess. I guess, girl. I guess. <laughs> I guess. But yeah. So I PJ, like Uncle PJ, get her a car. Yeah. Oh, so what that was about um, when the dad, PJ had to tell the dad, like, her dad does help her, but you're just, like, you just don't see it. Do you think the dad is too hard on um, the older man? Well, yes and no, because I can't understand what type of drug he's taking. To me, I guess... I guess my opinion on drugs, I guess I'm more, like, um, conservative and I know he said it's a, pres a prescription drug. It's not cocaine or whatever. But to me, if it's not your prescription, I feel like, <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? It's your yeah, drugs or drugs. Yeah, that's how I feel. So I feel like his his dad is react. To me, his dad's reaction is normal because it's like his dad feels like, okay, you back on drugs. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's how he's responding. So, but at the same time, I feel like he could, I don't know. I, I still feel like he is being a tad harsh. It's kind of like he's almost taking his daughter away from him, taking Deja away from him. Like he didn't yeah. want to. Yeah. That's the that's, part. He was trying to drive off before he got there. I was like, okay, he was kind of pushing it there. Like, why? Like, he looks normal. Yeah. She wouldn't yeah. see anything. 
by him just at least saying hi to her, even though she's going to spend the night at grandpa's house. And I feel like that makes it worse. Like the situation with him driving off, I'm sure, you know, yeah. she would be in the car asking like, why are you running away from my dad? Why can't my dad right. see me? Right. Before that, she just thought, okay, he was at work. But now that <laughs> he's chasing them in the car, she's like, what's going right. on? Right. Right. She's at that age. She got questions. What is going on here? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So, yeah, he is doing a little bit too much. And I feel like Nisi, it was nice of PJ to buy her a car, but I felt like that was too much, too. Because I always feel like, you know, you have to earn what you have. And I felt like that is kind of yeah. like spoiling her. Like, she needs help, but she doesn't need to be spoiled, you know? Right. And she has only been working for one month. I'm yeah. pretty sure, you know, they all got it together. I'm pretty sure it took all of them more than one month to get a car, too. So... But I do understand they didn't have children and, you know, so she kind of does need it. But, yeah, even though Mary Jane was kind of harsh on her about jumping into getting the car, I mean, there was some truth to it. Like, hey, like, you literally just got a job a month ago and you right. already wasted your first check. So, <laughs> so you really can't afford a car. But, right. I mean, at least she got some help. Yeah. Yeah, so she can get back and forth to work. So let's see. So the next scene was finally, I guess we talked about it a little bit earlier with Mary Jane and her GG, gorgeous guy, <laughs> finally at the house, I guess having dinner and wine. Yeah. And, I and this is me breaks up with him. How they started the conversation. Because he said something to her about being overly conscious about work and that right. she was the second black woman he dated that was overly conscious about her performance at work. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I mean, I can relate to that. I always be thinking myself, like, I always find myself saying, I don't want to be the black girl at work that and fill in the blank. I will not always, but I've said that phrase before. So I, I have two mm -hmm. Like if somebody, if something happened, I have. I, I mean, I'm not always like this, but if something happens that upsets me at work, I don't want to show it because I don't want to be the angry black woman. Right. At work. You know what You're I'm saying? Right. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So Girl, I get what she's saying, but yeah. I mean, I guess I can understand with him coming from. Well, number one, he wouldn't understand because he doesn't know that feeling. But even if he was aware of the feeling, maybe if he was coming from a just be yourself regardless standpoint, then I yeah. could kind of see where he was, where he would be coming from. Yeah. And she was like, you know what? I, I don't, I don't feel like explaining It's you know. Right. Cause, and that's true. Like you don't want every day. First of all, you beg for a date, but a date is not going to be talking about, Social issues, you know. So right. I think that you want to date to be a date. So either we're not right. meshing just because we're not meshing, or maybe we're not meshing because of our racial differences. Right. Exactly. Um. So her and Gigi kind of call it quits. He says he gives up. And um. In the next thing we have um, Kara. I think you pronounce it Kara. Yeah. And um, the issue with Marisol, the uh, the new Latina at work. And um, apparently, okay, so Kara confronted Marisol. Kara don't like Marisol because she feels like maybe she's sleeping with the boss. She just doesn't feel like she deserves her job there. And I don't think Kara likes other Latina women in general. <laughs> like, that's what I get from her. Like, but... So she accuses her, not accuses, but like she says that, you know, are you sleeping with the boss? And Marisol goes to HR and reports her. Right. What did you think about that? I, I, you know what? Okay. When Kara first went off on her, I kind of thought, I was like, first of all, I missed, I was like, did she sleep with the boss or not? So I was like, if she right. did, then I was kind of here for Kara going off on her. But then when she said she really didn't, I was like, okay, maybe Kara's just giving her a hard time. Yeah. 
But either way, I didn't think that it was worthy of going to HR because that's really serious to get somebody fired. Yeah, and I feel like you know, you should, Carol was doing too much. Yeah. But I don't think it was HR worthy. <laughs> I think HR would be like if somebody physically, you know, did something to you, like, you know, sexual harassment, then maybe you go to HR. But another woman, you know, saying, you know, are you sleeping with the boss? Kind of like in jest. I don't think that was worthy of HR. But we kind of saw Marisol's true colors because she told Kara, you know, if you put me on your show, basically this is all, this can all go away. And then Kara put her on the show, but then the HR situation didn't go away. Still came. I was like, oh my gosh. I couldn't believe that. So I was like, okay, kind of confused. Like what happened? Is it because she had told already? And that's why they still showed up? Or did... Mari saw like really play Kara like that. And I think she played her. Really? I she, yes. Oh, I, my, I was like, that's mean. That's so messed up. Yeah. So if she, she didn't play her, then Kara been right all along. Like you're mm -hmm. using your minority status, but doing creepy stuff on the low to still get to the top. So either Kara is gonna be right, or I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they just came because they heard from the beginning. I don't think so. That's my opinion. I think, I think she played Kara. I think she told her this could all go away if you put me on air. Kara put her on air, and the issue did not go away. Yeah. I, I thought the scene where Mary Jane and Kara were talking about it, I thought that was a really good scene. I, mm. forgot, I almost forgot about it for a second. <laughs> yeah. But that was actually my favorite scene of the episode when I guess they were at Mary Jane's house. And because you know, Mary Jane don't really know about this that's going on, so right. I guess you He's know, she officially found out. And so, you know, Mary Jane was kind of asking her, like, hey, what does she have on you? But I noticed she technically didn't tell her, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was was so funny. she was like, this one little thing, it was weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. I was like, that's a guilty person. <laughs> I but know, I right? kind of agree with Kara and oh, it was Kara and Mary Jane. They both were talking about how when they were coming up in the field, they were a little bit more reserved. But now Kara has Mary Saul and then Mary Jane has the black girl that's on her team. Yeah. And both of them seem to you see yourself in them, but then they just do some stuff that's considered what well, would be considered out of line during their right. time. And right. I just so relate to that because I be seeing stuff like that. Even between me and my siblings, the ones of us that have an age gap, like when they be doing stuff, I'll be like, I thought that was disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> but like you, you could do that now. Okay. Right. Like, okay, I guess that's normal now. But yeah. so that was a really good issue that I thought they kind of were talking about on the show as a whole, just how the generation and how they communicate on a professional level has changed over the last, you know, pretty much from nice, decade nice. to decade, you know, because they're not that far apart in age from, you know, the ones under them. Right, right. Yeah, but I don't know. So we'll see. I hope Kara don't get fired because then they're going to say, you know, how can we not see each other if I produce the show? And she's like, we'll work it out with management. Well, it's only two options. One of them got to go, right? <laughs> yeah, and I don't want Kara to get fired because that's kind of like her life. Her. That show, that's her whole life. Her work is her life. Right. And, you know, it would probably be such a slap in the face. She sacrificed all this time with her kids and for them to drop her just because some new young girl say one thing. Like, and I'm surprised Greg didn't have her back more. But, you know, if he is a married man and... Yes, that's the issue. He don't have her back because she put his name in it. Yeah. So it's not much he can do because he don't want to be, you know, associated with that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but that's it. I was like, oh, my gosh, Mari's so, like... I was almost just remember how I was saying at first I thought Kara's right, then I switched to Mari Soul, but then mm -hmm. I switched it. And then so I was like, oh my gosh, just when I was on your side, girl. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be careful what you say to people though. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. 
Because mm -hmm. I thought I missed it. I thought maybe she did, you know, see something or saw them playing footsies together. I thought I didn't think she was lying or joking, if you will. Yeah. But the fact that that was a hundred percent complete lie and nothing to it at all, yeah, that is kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. It was just an assumption, right? Mm -hmm. So did so this was the season finale? Yeah. Yep, it's over until season four. So I want to see Mary Jane fall in love. I want to have her, I want her to have like a happy ending. Like get married, fall in love, all that stuff. Oh, and so how do you think she acted when she saw David at the uh, oh, or whatever? Uh, I think she held herself together well. Uh, but it's like, I don't know. I know it probably felt like a jarring feeling, like seeing him, especially since, you know, she admitted that she had got pregnant with his baby like six years ago. So yeah. to see him with, you know, his new daughter um, with somebody else, I'm sure it was kind of like shocking, even though she knew the girl was pregnant. I'm sure it was shocking. Right. But I thought she handled, I thought she handled herself well. Have um, Mary Jane and that girl ever met before? I thought they seen each other before. Yeah, because Mary Jane had come to his house and she was there. Right. So usually one person out of the three usually say something. <laughs> but I maybe know. I think I guess she was walking ahead. So I think Mary Jane back was turned when she walked around. Yeah. Walked by, and then when David it. came by, it was eye He's to eye. Yeah. And was that before or after the mother came over? I think it was after. I want to say after. So what a crazy coincidence. <laughs> Your mama show up begging about you and now I see you at the store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But no. yeah. So I don't know. I guess I probably wouldn't have said nothing, but I, I wouldn't know. say anything because it's kind of like, what do you say now? He there with his, his wife and his baby. Like, what am I saying? That's true. That's how I feel about it. So the last scene, and I guess this, to me, this is the part that really made it a season finale because everything else is so open. But now we have Nisi driving in her brand new car that she got from her uncle and mm -hmm. she gets pulled over by the police. Yeah. This is Georgia, right? I believe they're in Georgia, right? Yeah, so. like Atlanta. Yeah. So she gets pulled over, and when the cop comes, instantly she says, "What did you pull me over for?" And I didn't think she was gonna respond that way because she had just told her kids, "I'm gonna talk to the nice policeman." So yeah. I thought she was gonna be compliant when the police. Right. Came. <laughs> she was not compliant. <laughs> But I definitely didn't think she was going to go left. I think she felt asking, what did you pull me over for, was her still being nice. <laughs> for her, that's not <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that was her version of nice. And the police officer was so kind of like taken aback. Like, you could tell that he was kind of like, he seemed kind of like a rookie cop. And he just seemed really taken aback by her actions. Even though she wasn't really, you know, doing anything wrong. You know what I mean? But he was just kind of like, whoa, you know? Yeah, it's so sad. And, you know, legally you have the right to ask that question before you hand your stuff over. But mm -hmm. I feel like every time someone asks, it makes them mad. I've asked before. And it was like, we'll talk about that later. And I'm just like, dang, like, it's just a question. Like, wouldn't you ask me that if I caught you? If I pulled you up? <laughs> well, see, that's what they be asking me. The times I've got stopped, and got stopped by police, they be like, do you know what I'm pulling you over for? That's how they start the conversation with me. Mm. By asking me. So I've never had to ask them. And I never would. I'd be so mad. Like when I get pulled over, I don't hardly have nothing to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Or else we probably would go left. <laughs> right. Right. All so I'm, I'm just not going to say nothing. Take go my license. <laughs> do what you got to do. So she said... He said for the loud music, and she said, is it illegal to drive the loud music? I'll hear it. It, it is. It actually yeah. is. 
So I don't yeah. know if it's not like that everywhere where maybe she just didn't know it, but <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, yeah, it know. is. <laughs> Cause she just got her car. I guess she just started driving like that. So she probably don't know that, you know, at a certain point, yeah, it is illegal, you know, if it's too loud. Right. But I don't remember really hearing no music. <laughs> Look, so, and it could have been even so loud. She had her kids in the back. You know, she's not going to have it, but so loud. But for whatever reason, he stopped her. And... But see, I don't know what she thought. What? So I think if I'm not mistaken, the order of what happened, she was like, whatever, and was about to proceed to leave. So you can't do that. <laughs> but, and then that's what, he was wrong, because at that point he tried to stop the window. So that's when he started blowing yeah. it. But I don't think it's legal for you to run away. <laughs> no, so, you can't be like, nah, forget this. I'm out. Right. You can't do that. Nah. <laughs> So he not only puts his hand on the window, he opens her door and pulls her out. Yeah. That was sad. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So she pushes him off because that is alarming. Like, okay, at this point you're doing stuff illegal. Like, what am I supposed to do? Not push you off of me? So yeah. she pushes him off. He pulls out the taser and tases her. I'm glad it was a taser and not a gun. I know. I know. Meanwhile, at the office, Mary Jane workers are watching it all unfold live. And I'm like, are they just connected to police dash cams illegally? Or is this off, or this is live? Is somebody filming from the sidewalk? <laughs> I guess so. I guess somebody was on Periscope or something like that and was filming it, which I'm glad. You know, I'm always glad when people are able to get stuff on tape. Right. So I guess somebody was filming it. Right. Her son get out of his seat belt, get to the front, crying mommy. Yeah. But that taker, it didn't keep her down too long because <laughs> she was screaming, uh, my kids are in the car, get off of me. Yeah. And then yeah, the that was sad. Yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh. Especially mm -hmm. when the son got out the seat and saw it. Yeah, you don't want to see that. You don't want your kids to see that. Right. Mm -hmm. But so I guess the war is going to, you know, probably open addressing that issue, you know. And yeah. I feel like a lot of times, even also on Empire, how Empire started off addressing um, black men in prison, talking about um, Lucius. And then when they got to the, the brat, she was kind of like, well, what about black women in prison? I guess now being Mary Jane is going to start to tackle that issue too. You know what I mean? Black women and how we're treated by police. Yeah, yeah. That that would be good. That will be yeah. good. That was a lot. Mm -hmm. So then we'll have to see what happens. I mean, at least somebody's seen it live so instantly Mary Jane can either go to the scene but it's like, what happens in that situation? At this point, she's clearly going to get arrested no matter what. I don't yeah. see them letting her go. So, like, what, are her kids going to go to Child Protective Services? Or are they just take them to the police station and call the family? Like, yeah. I mean, they'll probably end up back with the grandparents, you know? Right. She just got her job, so clearly now she's going to miss either today's or tonight's work. So, it's like you just seeing her whole little life unfold. Like, she's so happy. She just got her car. Mm -hmm. And then one... In one instant, her whole life is changed about to crumble. Yeah, yeah. So everything sad. she just got, like she probably about to lose her job, lose her car. Everything that she just got is probably about to be taken from her. Yeah. <clears throat> so that is pretty much how it ended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be looking forward to season four. But I want to see, I, like I said, I want to see her happy. I want to see her fall in love with somebody in season four. Yeah, me too. And even though the breakup with Gorgeous Guy was a little weird, I mean, I kind of think it kind of served its purpose. Try something yeah. you never tried before, and now you could go back to settling down and or finding that one you really want to be with. Yeah, now you know what you don't want. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And hopefully Thuddy Buddy come back. <laughs> we'll see, girl. They didn't break <laughs> up or they didn't have no... I mean, but yeah, yeah. it was a weirdness, but it wasn't technically like I never want to see you ever. At least right, no. guy, that Sheldon guy, she was like, no, like goodbye forever. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's just me holding on. Holding on to hope. <laughs> holding on for funny, but <laughs> but we will see. All right, so that's it. <laughs> that is our season three review of Being Mary Jane, the finale. And thank you guys for watching. Tammy, I don't know if you had any last words. Um, No, that's pretty much it, you guys. So you guys go ahead and give us the thumbs up on the video. Leave some comments. Let us know what your favorite part of the season finale is. And let us know... What did you think about the Nisi and the cop scene? Did Nisi uh, kind of pop off too fast or was the cop just making a big deal of nothing really? Mm-hmm. So let us know your take on that. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's a good and question. You guys, you guys can always just hit me up on Twitter at uh, Tammy B underscore. And mine is Layla Lynn. Um, at Layla Lynn. And that's on Twitter, Instagram, um, and the blog is LaylaLynn.com, and I'll put links below this. All right. See you in the next video.